and on that TV was everyone, every single person in this world and every single thing that was happening. And that was spectacular for me because I could not concentrate on one thing. I was shocked that the Lord could see everything just by that he like, every single thing was happening. Every, even if it was hide, the person was hiding it, the Lord could see it right there. And behind me, I could see a book. It was like a really big book on a stand and the page was flicking by itself every single time. Because at that moment, I could see people worshipping him. There was a lot of people in front of the throne and there were people worshipping him. Every time they would bow down and say kings of kings and lord of lords repeatedly. I could see the throne was right in front of me, like I was kneeling in front of it. But on the left hand, there was the door that read the kingdom of hell. And on the right hand, there was the door that read the kingdom of heaven. And the gap between these two doors was unbelievable. It was a huge gap, like you couldn't even try to jump over to the other side. I concentrated on two people that I recognised, that I knew that I'd seen them from somewhere. And those people were pop stars, and they were Michael Jackson and Amy Winehouse. They were being tortured in all kinds of ways. And it saddened me because well, when I was younger, like I used to love listening to Michael Jackson and his dance moves. I would try and do a replica of that. I would try and copy what he was doing because I thought it was so cool. And seeing him in hell just kind of shocked me a bit. Then I saw Amy Winehouse and she was being forced to sing the songs that she sang whilst on earth. And as she was singing this, a huge snake, just imagine an anaconda, like how the big, the, how huge an anaconda is. It would go inside her and travel within her body. And when I saw them, Michael was being forced to dance the moves that he did on earth whilst on earth. And the demons, every time he would dance the moves, the demons would shoot sharp spears into him. And every time he pissed into his body, he would scream in so much agony and pain. Even plan to do is open like a book to God. Everything is open like a, like a TV screen. He can see everything. So there's no point in hiding because what you're doing wrong is what is leading you, what has got you chained up in hell, leading you towards it. children within the family and this testimony will be about how the Lord did me grace of me allowing me to visit heaven and hell. It all began back in 2012, mid-summer, it was during July and I had finished my exams, I was at the end of my exams, exam times and that night I had a dream before we left my, re my, my, um, my old house, before we moved to my, my recent house right now. I was asleep and the Lord had told me to give my father a message and as that morning I woke up one morning I went downstairs and I told my father the message after I told him um, they were in the garden him and my mother and after I told him I was about as I was going back in my dad stopped me and he called me and he said to me he was said Sarah do you know that the Lord will visit you heaven and as a child I replied I don't know I took it I took it as a joke personally I took it as a joke and I just walked on and I forgot everything about it and around the 5th of July um, we, we, we had finished school around then we had finished school preparing to go on holiday and I heard the Lord say to me to prepare myself and he, he repeated that twice or three times and that morning I woke up and told my father and he said that um, that the Lord will take me to heaven and I had to prepare myself. It wasn't long after that that we moved to my other, my recent house in Hayes. And after we moved, oh, whilst we were moving, I, I completely forgot anything about preparing myself for heaven. Because I, I remember the Lord telling me, but, but the whole moving situation just kind of took my mind off it for a while. And on the 25th, I was supposed to attend an appointment with my pet, with my mum and my little sister. That morning we woke up, we were at the, in our garden, um, 
you having breakfast i went inside to get something and as i was just picking up the thing i heard a voice say to me as from midnight not to eat and this was on the 25th of july when i heard this voice um i woke up and i went to my my dad and i told him i told him what i had heard and he said as from midnight i must obey that voice so i did and we went along with the day and on the 26th of the same month of july is the day that everything began now the visitation wasn't that it wasn't that i would sleep and i would dream i was going the visitation was that i would sleep and my spirit would leave my body every single morning the lord will come out stand outside my window on on um thin air and throughout the whole visit i could not see his face whatsoever I could never raise up my head to look up to him and actually physically see his face. And um, it was that my spirit would leave my body and every time the Lord came to visit me, he would stand outside my window and raise out his hand. And I would take that hand and my spirit would leave my body and the Lord would take me to heaven. On the 26th, as, as I was asleep, I saw myself kneeling down in front of a huge throne type of chair. And it was golden. But then because I was kneeling down in front of it, it was as if I, would look, I looked really small compared to the front. Because someone was sitting on the front, it, the person was huge. Like, I looked like a tiny ant compared to the person. And I, I saw the person was wearing a white robe. I could never raise my, my head up to see his voice, to see his face, sorry. It's like my whole, all the, throughout the whole time, my head was face down. And I, I couldn't, I don't know, it was like I was so small compared to everything around me. But then the weird thing is, although my face, I was ne- I was kneeling down in front of the throne and my face was down, but I could see every single thing that was happening around me. I didn't have to um, lift up my head to look around. I didn't have to do that. And I, all I had to do was stay still and I could see everything that was happening around me. And behind me, I could see a book. It was like a really big book on a stand and the page was flicking by itself every single time. And I didn't understand what was making it, but no, I, I, the way I could see is that no one was around it. It was just a single book just standing there. And each minute it was like a person would walk towards the book and go to the side. Because on the side there was a, some sort of door that was there. But then there was three, the, the, different, the weird thing is that as the people walked towards the book, they turned around and they went through this door. It was like a normal door, but... It was gold, it was shining. As it op- as Every time the door opened, it was shining. It was really bright. You couldn't see inside. But the people would carry on walking towards it. And I, the more I concentrated, I, I just kept my head down and decided not to move anymore. I could see the friend was right in front of me. Like I was kneeling in front of it. But on the left hand, there was the door that read the kingdom of hell. And on the right hand, there was the door that read the kingdom of heaven. And... The gap between these two doors was unbelievable. It was a huge gap. Like You couldn't even try to jump over to the other side, let alone just even try walk over to it. You couldn't, Even if you ran back 500 miles and tried jumping, it would not work. You just couldn't do it. It was that, it was that deep. And when I saw this, like, I, I, tried to concentrate, I concentrated on the door, on the door that read the kingdom of heaven. I sat there for a while. I just knelt there for a while just looking at it. And all of a sudden, we're in front of my family home in um, Bishop's Road, which is in Hayes. I took the Lord's hand because he was holding my hand, and I I decided to turn it upside down. When I did, and I I saw um, he still had the nail marks that he was crucified with on the cross. There was still there, there was a big hole there and with blood on it as well. And I said to him, I said, Lord, you died for so many people, the pain you felt. And he stopped me halfway, and he said to me, don't worry Sarah it is coming to an end this shall all go look at your family and you sleeping and when he said this it was as if because every time we would go come back to earth we would never touch ground never ever would always um, float on thin air and when he said this I looked straight into my house and like I couldn't see the wall that stopped people from looking into my house the wall at the front it was as if it was invisible that you could see directly through it and that morning, you must know that I did not wake up to come downstairs to check what everyone else was doing. Throughout that whole morning, I was upstairs in my room. And I hadn't even seen any of my family yet. And I could see, like, the, when, the, way, the place that I and the Lord stood, it was right um, outside my house. I could see every single person inside the house. And I could see exactly every single thing that they were doing and what they were saying. 
it was amazing because the Lord also showed me my body, my human body, the way I was sleeping. And I remember, like, the last time I remember me sleeping was exactly like that. And I found that quite shocking for myself. And then afterward, the Lord, um, yeah, after I saw my whole, my whole family doing what we had to do, the Lord said to me, he said, come up and see this. And we started rising, like, it was, we were rising onto the thin air, um, onto the sky. But then we got on top of my roof and we stopped. There was a huge star. It, the star was so big. And it was shining really bright. Just imagine the sun. Like, you could not sit there and look at the sun directly without you wearing sunglasses or anything because your eyes would hurt really bad and you could even become blind at a point. That was how bright it was. But then the different what the difference was that I could look directly at the star because I was with the Lord. This it wasn't my human body doing all this, it was the spirit. So I could look directly at the sun. And the Lord said to me, he said, that star is your blessings, my protection and love for your family. I always see when your family gathers to pray at night and it makes me happy. Tell your father I love him very much and I love your family very much. I need to show you more things and the palace I have prepared for your family and the big book of life. But that is later. Go and get some rest. I love you, daughter. And I replied back to I love you too, Lord. And after this, he took me, um, released my spirit and I went back into my human body. Now, when he, when the Lord said, it makes me happy every time I see you guys pray, it's because in my family, we have this sort of, um, this thing that we do. It's every single night before we pray, before we sleep, we have to pray. You, if you can be asleep, my dad will literally come and wake you up because we have to pray before we sleep. And we don't just do it because, oh, my father's a pastor. It's like something we, like people would normally do. No, it's not just because he's a pastor. It's something that he, it makes the Lord happy. Like you woke up that morning knowing, you didn't know, well, you didn't even know you was going to wake up. You, you woke up that morning knowing, oh, you know, like you didn't know what was going to happen. You could have died that, that night that you went to sleep. You didn't, because a lot of people within the world died that night. But the Lord allowed you, he's given you free breath, he's given you the strength to live again, to wake up to another morning, for you to see life again and live life the way you're living. That is, that is a huge grace, you, you don't even understand right now. A lot of people are dying just like that, you sleep, they never wake up. They go to the hospital, they fall asleep for a bit, just a tiny bit of illness that causes them to lose their life. But the Lord has allowed you to see another morning. You have to be thankful for that. You really have to be grateful for that. That's why... You are children of God. I'm, um, I'm telling, like, advising you. You can be a mother, daughter, son, um, an elderly. I would really advise you to every single night before you sleep, please take at least two minutes of your time. It doesn't have to be a whole hour of prayers. No, just two minutes of your time, and that time use that to just at least say thank you, God, for this day. And I thank you for keeping me safe throughout the day. Please protect me through the night so that if you come, I may be able to see you and get into heaven on the last day. That's it. It doesn't have to be a long hour prayer. No, even two minutes is enough for them. And yeah, it's really important. I can't, I can't, if I, if I was able to show you my heart, how like, how important this is to the Lord, how happy it makes him, you don't need to do something big or go give offerings offerings are as important but it just to think something so small making the lord happy how how would does that make you think that your father the one who created you is really pleased with what you're doing and that was on the 26th of july on the 27th the visit was from 11 36 to 12 31 that morning i woke up quite early and i felt a headache coming on again so i decided to go back to sleep and as I was sleeping, I heard a voice say to me, Sarah, I must speak with you. It was the Lord. He held out his hand and took mine from my window and we started escalating into heaven, into thin air. And it took us a really, really long time for us to actually get to heaven itself, a really long time. I tried looking down and you couldn't see anything at the, like down. You, all you could see was clouds. And once there, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how come you visit me in the mornings than at night now? And he answered, because I want you to write everything down straight away when you wake up. Tell your mother not to worry about her brother's illness. He will, he will be healed. He is serving me. Therefore, he shall not die until I, the Lord, say so. 
children of God, this is the reason why I'm reading from papers. It's not because I've written everything down to remember, but the Lord had told me during the visit that I have to write every single thing down. Even when I testify, I must write everything, every single thing down so that when I testify, I say exactly what he said so that I don't forget anything that he says. And the reason why the Lord said to tell my mother not to worry about her brother's illness is because at the time of the visitation, my uncle, my mum's younger brother, was critically ill. He had um, some complications with, with his operations, which had come back again, and the pain had thrown him all of a sudden. It was very sudden, the pain that the illness had come back. And my mum was, in fact, very worried about this. We could see that she was worried, because she was worried that he, it might cause lead him to his death. And the Lord has said this, that because my uh, my uncle was serving him, he works for the Lord, he can't die until the Lord himself says so. And that, that, that doesn't just, I would say that doesn't, that's not just for my family personally. It's for anyone out there. If you know that you have a family member that is ill or that is critically in really crit in a critical condition at the moment in the hospital, don't bother yourself. Like, don't put, don't take it upon yourself that, oh, what am I going to do? Because his breath is in the hands of the Lord. You can't do anything to save him. You can buy medication, you can do all sorts, but his breath is in the hands of the Lord. All you have to do is just take a minute, pray, and believe that it has been happened. And I guarantee you that that person will not die. And if the person do, does die, that doesn't mean that the Lord has abandoned you, no. It's because the Lord has chosen that person. That was the day and the time for them to take that person away. For this is the time for them to go and rest. That is the reason why. Do not think that the Lord has abandoned you, because the Lord never abandons his children. And once we got to heaven, the gates, it was as if, as we walked to, the gates automatically opened by itself. No one had to come touch or press any buttons for it to work. Automatically opened. And we started walking, because as from the gate, there was a golden pavement that led straight into heaven. And on the sides, there were flowers. And as we started traveling down the, um, the pavement, and I was looking at the flowers, it was, the flowers in heaven, they're so unique, like looking at them just fills you with happiness. Like in, the, in this world, you look at flowers and you think, oh, they're, they're beautiful, they're beautiful. But in reality, the the ones in heaven, like they can bring a tear to your eye, like they can get you teary because of the beauty of it. And we, st we carried on walking down the path. And after a while, I realized that the Lord wasn't with me anymore. And the reason for this was because he went back onto his throne because at that moment I could see people worshipping him. There was a lot of people in front of the throne and there were people worshipping him. Every time they would bow down and say kings of kings and lord of lords repeatedly. And I thought I, that was amazing for me. It was, like, it was like an entertainment for me. I could just sit there all day and just watch it. And you can never get tired of it. Then as I carried on walking down the pavement by myself and then I saw an angel come to get me, took my hand and took me to a place. It was like a little changing room I would say. That's what I would call it. It was the changing room and um, I, I would get changed. The angel would dress me. It would take off my humanly clothes and would put back my heavenly clothes that um, I needed to, to be able to walk around heaven. And after I was done wear, um, wearing the robe that I would normally wear in heaven, it was golden, I would say. The color was golden. It was well, pure white with golden trims on it. It was beautiful. And as I finished, as I walked out of the changing room, the Lord um, came back as to stay with me and he took me to some sort of helicopter thing i don't know how to explain it. it was like i wouldn't say it's a car but then it was like i wouldn't say it's a proper helicopter either i call it a helicopter thing because it, you know the way it worked it was like a helicopter but i wouldn't say it's actually a helicopter and we sat inside it and um we sat inside it and we rose and as we were flying within the helicopter, no one had to drive it. No one was in the driver's seat or no pilot was driving it, no. It's just me and the Lord, we sat there and it was flying by itself. And the Lord said to me, he said, look down, my daughter. And as I looked down, there was a huge palace. Like, it was so big. We had to get down for me to actually be able to actually see everything that was inside it. And we got, as we got off the helicopter, I ran towards the palace and I read the name. It had a name tag in, on, on in front of the gate. And it said Fami Boyanga. 
the Lord opened the gates and he sat down within the compound, like within the compound, not inside the actual house, but within the compound. And the reason why I said for me, Boyanga, because ev in heaven, you must know that everyone has, has their own palace. It's not that families come together. No, if you're my family, you live with me. No, every single person has their own house, their own palace with their own name tags on it. That is specifically for you. No one else is going to live with you. It's your personal little house. And as we went inside the palace, like the Lord sat within the compound and I went inside the actual house itself. I was able to visit every single room that was inside from my room to my brothers and sisters to my parents' room. It was unbelievable. I was shocked personally because when I mean every single room has every single thing that every one of my brothers could possibly want in their room. And my room, it had everything, like everything that I wish for to be in my room at this moment was there. And I was shocked. I was like, I was like, it is true when they say that the Lord does, he knows exactly what his children want. Because everything of mine was in my room, everything of my little sisters from her dolls to every princess thing that she likes in her room because she's quite young she likes all those things and everything was there it was like it shocked me because i t personally for me i think it's that as you grow up everything that you want in your house will come there everything that you want in your room what you want to be in your kitchen everything will be there and when i was done with this i went downstairs decided to go downstairs and go into the kitchen and as i walked in the kitchen was huge the kitchen was so big it had everything inside it that me and my parents could put me and my mom could possibly want in a kitchen and i heard the lord say from the front he said i know you and your mother love a big kitchen so i built one for you i was filled with so much joy i just sat i just studied the utensils within the kitchen so carefully and it filled me with happiness once i was done i walked out into the garden and it was beautiful it's like the pot there was a pathway and it was as if there was fruits within like either side of the pathway and I, I as I was walking down the pavement as the fruits were so beautiful and tempting to eat like there's some fruits there that I recognize personally like I've seen them before on earth but there's some which are unique and specifically in heaven you can't you can never find them on earth and I was so tempted to um, to get one of these fruits I sat, I stood there for a while just looking at it. I, mean, I knew my heart was telling me, should I take one, should I not? Should I take one, should I not? Like, I, I could just spend like a good five minutes just there, try, just trying to make up my mind whether to take one or not. And at the end, I finally made up my mind and I said, no, I shouldn't take one. So I ran to the front of um, the compound where the Lord was sitting and he led me out of the palace. Cause, but before leaving, there was four luxurious cars within the compound. The cars were beautiful. They were amazing. And those compounds, those cars, sorry, they just, they were just there. Like, no one had touched, not a single speck of dirt on it. It was just there, like, clean. And I realized that these are the things that the Lord had, will, has promised me and my family on earth. And as the Lord, the Lord led me out of the palace and said, I have to show you something, daughter. We started, it was like, we started rising. I wouldn't say it was flying exactly. It was like, we just stood there. As we were walking, we were rising higher and higher. And we sat on top of a tall mountain. The mountain was so tall that my body, my earthly body, because me personally, I am afraid of heights. I'm really afraid of heights. I could not go on a high thing and sit, stand there and look down because I could faint. I will pass out on the spot right there and I'll be gone because of the height, the, the way I'm afraid of height. But then there is like, the mountain was so high that I could look down and I'll be fine. Like, I wouldn't need to like, try and stop myself from trying to fall no i would be fine because i was with the lord and i sat down next to the lord because we sat down on some sort of rock that was within the mountain we sat down and the lord said to me look over there and he was pointing to the other side i looked to where the lord had told me to look and i focused i really focused my mind on it and i saw the f the more concentrated i was the more i could see it was like a uh, there was a big gap between these two things, this, these two places. It was like a big hole and it was spitting fire and around it was that like black mud. It was like all dark. Because in heaven, there's no such place that is dark and dull. No, everything is lit, is bright and joyful and colorful. But this place, it was like on the other side and between it, there was a huge gap. It was like where we were and there you can never not even not even in a lifetime try jump over unless the lord allows you to which is very unlikely but 
you can never ever try to jump over. And the more I concentrated, the more I realized that I could hear people's screams. I could hear people screaming and shouting in pain. And I didn't want to get any, I didn't want to go straight into conclusion, but I could, it was as if the loud, the more conscious, the louder the screams became. And then I could, I could kind of feel the pain that they were going through just by hearing them scream. And I heard, I heard the Lord say to me, he said, you will no longer belong there because you serve me. And just hearing this made, like, it, it filled my heart with so much joy because I knew I will never be able to face the pain that those people are going through. Never. I don't need to scream like that because, because I don't belong there anymore. And at that moment, I had the thought in my head. It was as if I was as if I knew it was hell in a way, but I didn't want to think of hell because of all sorts of things that I had heard before about hell. I didn't even want to have the image of hell in my head. And, and then the Lord said to me, he said, I need to show you one more thing. He showed me um, without, we didn't really, we didn't really move. It was as if like we didn't have to stand up walk down the hill again it was just like that he took me to a house it was a palace we because we as we as we just flicked straight into the in front of the palace i could see it was like a road in the middle and there were how there were houses all over the place and each palace i wouldn't really say it's a house it's a palace really each palace had a name tag on them and each name tag each name tag had a certain specific name but the Lord wouldn't allow me to read these names because they weren't my palace unless until he allowed me to. Then I could see the names. But either way, I could not enter other people's palace. I read the name and it said Sarah Bin Binayam, which is my name. I was astonished. Like I was so shocked that I started crying. I literally started stood there and just cried my eyes out. And the Lord, the Lord allowed me to visit the interior of the house. And it was so detailed and beautiful that... I could, I could never imagine anything like that, like any anyone even doing something like that for me. The Lord then, after this, the Lord then took me back to where we changed our robes into the normal, into my normal humanly clothes, and the Lord took me back to my house where I hugged him before leaving with great love, and I said, "I love you, Lord," and he replied, "I love you too." You see, in heaven, everything that is in heaven is golden. Your house is golden. It may have things inside it that are multicolored, but uh, before you even enter a house, the gate within your house is golden. Your name tag is everything's golden. It's like there's no such thing as dirt in heaven. Ev like everything is just clean. Every single thing that you look at, there's no such thing as bins in heaven. There's no bins. Everything is clean there. On the 28th of July, the visit was from 10:15 to 10:45. That morning, I heard the Lord say, "Say, I must talk with you." He passed his hand as usual and took mine and we walked to the end of my road and we started lifting into air. Once in heaven, we, as we entered the gates, once more the angels came and took my hand, led me to a room where I got changed and straight away I sensed that the Lord had gone back to his throne. After changing, the Lord came back and took my hand and said, I must show you something. The Lord led me to a very dark tunnel. It was like, as we started walking through that tunnel, the tunnel, it took, it was very, it was a really long, long journey to get to from the beginning to the end of that tunnel. It took us a really long time, and the tunnel was really dark. But as the Lord and the Lord walked in, it lit up by itself, so like magically, just by itself, by the grace of the Lord, because the Lord was there. It lit up by itself. And I asked, um, as we were walking, I asked the Lord um, where we were, and He didn't answer me because I asked Him, "Where, Lord, where are you taking me?" And He didn't answer my question. And as we finally got to the end, there was a very big hole. It was like, you get to the end is here, and there's a huge hole just there. Like, you couldn't move to this side or this side, try to jump over. It was just a hole that went straight down. I could see there was a whole um, smoke. At first, it wasn't clear, because all I could see was smoke. Like, I couldn't see anything that was within the hole. But as we started going down the hole, I held on to the Lord's hand very hard. And it was hot, really hot. And it was really, really loud as well. I could hear people crying and screaming for help every second they were being tortured. And the, the deeper we went in, the clearer everything became. I saw a lot of people, because before we got to the bottom of hell, as, on, as we were going down, I, I, I realised that on the sides there were people wearing black hoods, all chained up with hands and legs in a single line everyone was one behind the other and all of them were chained down with their heads um at the bottom like facing the ground 
And I asked the Lord, who are those people? And he replied, those are people who are heading towards hell. They do not know my word. Some do, but choose to ignore it. Those people are alive, but unaware of the place they are heading to. I do not want any of my children to come to this place. And it saddens me so much that they choose to ignore me. And when the Lord was saying this, he was saying it with great pain. Like, it was like every time he would feel something, I didn't need to see his facial expression. Whatever he felt, I felt with inside me. It was as if it was some sort of connection. Every time he felt sad, I would feel his sadness. I would know that the Lord feels isn't very happy. And children of God, there was a lot of people within the world that are walking. You see them walking as human beings and you see them all living life and that. But what they don't realize is that the wrongs that they are doing, although no one knows about it in the world, the wrongs that they are doing is what is leading them into hell. They don't know it because you do, they wouldn't see it. But if you if you ask the Lord to open your spiritual eyes, the Lord may be able to show you, even some people that you know within the world. You may be your friends, maybe anyone that you you've met, and they're headed they're heading towards hell because what they're doing is wrong. You may think that you can do what you want privately and hide and say, oh, no one will ever find out this is happening. No one will ever find out. But then what you don't know is nothing can be hidden in front of God. Everything you do, say, think, or even plan to do is open like a book to God. Everything is open like a, like a TV screen. He can see everything. So there's no point in hiding because what you're doing wrong is what is leading you, what has got you chained up in hell, leading you towards hell. You don't know it because you may think I'm walking around, I'm fine. But your sins is leading you to hell. Step by step, you don't know it. But but if the more if you ask them to open your eyes, you will see where you are heading to. So I plead, children of God, no matter who you are, you may be old and older, you may be um an adult, you may you can even be a mother of mine, in fact. You can you can be so old that you've given birth to me. You can be young, you can be a teen or a young child. Please, please, please just take a moment to just just think. Just take a moment to think about the way you've been walking within the world. What you're doing, is it right or is it wrong in front of the Lord? Do you think it would make the Lord happy? Is it affecting the Lord? Is it that certain thing that you can't stop that is leading you into hell? Just take a moment and think, and if you think that, that um, if you think that it's so hard for you that you can't stop, just go to um, a church. It does, you don't have to pray though necessarily just go to a man of god if you know a man of god just go there ask them to help you in prayers and you pray yourself as well because they will pray but the lord needs your prayer to he the lord needs to see that you really want to stop doing this so that you don't end up in hell so that you go into heaven just do that and give the lord your life and he will guide you in the right way i just know it and when i felt the lord's pain i decided not to say anything and we carried on going down the um, the hell, the hole, and I heard the screams got louder, and I could now see a lot of people being tortured. Although there was an un uncountable amount of people, I concentrated on two people that I recognized, that I knew that I had seen them from somewhere. And those people were pop stars, and they were Michael Jackson and Amy Winehouse. They were being tortured in all kinds of ways. And it saddened me because well, when I was younger, like, I used to love listening to Michael Jackson and his dance moves. I would try and do a replica of that. I would try and copy what he was doing because I thought it was so cool. And seeing him in hell just kind of shocked me a bit. And when I saw that Michael was being forced to dance the moves that he did on earth whilst on earth, and the demons, every time he would dance the moves, the demons would shoot sharp spears into him. And every time he pissed into his body, he would scream in so much agony and pain. And do it like seeing that kind of I felt like I was being tortured myself because that image, it upset me so much and throughout the whole thing I would just cry I would shout and cry no Lord please take me out of there and the demons would say to him dance dance for your God that you worship on earth dance you fool and once while saying this they would laugh in such an evil way that it upset me really very much that how can they do something to someone and find it normal. They found it absolutely normal. They found it as if it was an entertainment for them torturing someone else. Then I saw Amy Winehouse and she was being forced to sing the songs that she sang whilst on earth. And as she was singing this, a huge snake, just imagine an anaconda, like how the big, the, how huge an anaconda is. 
it would go inside her and travel within her body and just seeing this like it get it scared me so i like i couldn't stop crying this made me cry even more and even till today every time i think of it i get goosebumps literally like my i have i get shivers because of it and i hate i hate having to remember this but i have to remember it because every time i remember it i know sins is staying far away from me i am not no way am i going near sins because i don't want to be able to face this torture just the thought of it is horrible and every time the snake would go into her body it would travel and it'll crawl around her body biting her and everything and this would repeat would be repeated many times and she would scream in pain and she would say please one more chance and i will change please but then every time she said this the lord would just we would just carry on because it was too late for her she had the chance whilst on earth she had the chance to repent she knew there were churches she knew there were men of god or servants of god worldwide she could have easily gone and asked for help and they would have helped her stay away from satan but she decided to follow satan and his ways his evil ways because satan you must know children of course satan knows how to he knows how to draw people in he will say everything that you want to hear that's all he'll do he'll say everything that you know that you, he would he, he knows that you want to hear he would say it to you he would give you money he will show you that oh if you do this the fame that you'll have everyone will love you but then what he doesn't tell is the consequences of that because to do all that you, you do a pact with him you say that oh, i'm giving up my life yes i give you my soul for in return for all this goodness but then satan will give you all these things and he'll take it back just like that he doesn't need to warn you oh don't worry um you, whatever your name may be this person oh don't worry, i'm taking back my goodness i'm taking it back tomorrow to prepare yourselves to die he won't tell you that he'll tell you all the things that you need to hear he'll tell you, you should go past you should do this you could should get drunk it's fun you know live whilst you're young and that he doesn't tell you the consequences of that because the cons consequences of that is death he'll give you what you need but in a split of a second he can take it back but the Lord, he gives you what you need. He takes his time to give you exactly what you need. Be patient, because when he gives, he doesn't take back. He gives and you keep all that goodness for years and years and years until you die. And that carries on onto generations after generations. So that's why being patient with the Lord is better than rushing with Satan and losing your life because of it. That's all you need to do, just patience with the Lord. Because what he has promised you, just know that before you leave this earth, it will happen to you exactly the way he said to you. It doesn't need, he doesn't need to rush on it because he, he has your breath. He's in charge of your breath. He can take it when he wants, but he won't take it away until he gives you exactly what you what he owes you because he, the Lord does not stay in depth with people. After this, the, um, the Lord, we carried on going down. And the, I could um, think, we carried on going down, but it came to a point where the Lord finally took me out of hell. And it was, we sat on a mountain that we sat on before on the rock. And he'll rub my back and he said to me he said daughter i'm not showing you this to bring you pain not at all i have to show you this because before i can show you the rest of heaven people need to know the reality of hell tell them that hell is real and that is why children of god worldwide whoever whatever your name may be whoever you may be the lord loves us very much and it saddens him that people have decided to take his word and turn it around no, the people speak of the goodness and not the reality that there is hell and there is heaven. You, like before the visitation, I personally, I because my father's a pastor, he would preach and he would tell us that the hell is real, and I'd watch other testimonies on um on the computer that hell is real, and I hadn't really taken it into heart to be honest. I knew okay, I knew hell was real. Okay, hell exists, heaven exists as well like that was it that was it for me that was that was like that was enough for me to take me years on but then being able to experience it has changed my perspective of seeing how hell is i don't need to just think oh okay hell exists that's fine for me that's that'll do me for now but then now that i've experienced it it kind of is like a, a caution it's like a sign it's like a warning sign for me it's like every time i want to go into sin that sign is just comes straight up it's like wait stop right there do you want to do this because if you do this look at the consequences of it you'll end up in this certain place and that kind of stops me i'm like i'm it stops me completely and i'm saying this to you because i can't I, i'm not i'm not even i don't even need to exaggerate because the pain that is in hell even the thought of it today hurts me personally like it's 
it's changed my life seeing heaven seeing heaven pleases me but then seeing hell has changed my life completely that i cannot i cannot explain i can i can't show you how much that i really want people to repent right now please please wherever you are no matter what country you are no matter what culture you are in no matter what what you do in life please 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 i beg of you in the name of jesus christ who died for us on the cross who took all our sins and our pain away who gave us life please please repent your sins because if you don't you'll end up in this horrible place hell is not the place to be and i wouldn't wish it upon anyone to end up in hell no it's just horrible just the thought of it i would want people to end up in heaven just like the lord wants because it upsets him knowing that people have decided to dis to just disregard what he wants for the best for us and just follow satan because of because of what satan says to you satan can fool you easily and take away what he has given to you but the lord gives and leaves it there he gives you happiness patience like you do, you like you don't have to have everything in the world but the happiness that he'll give you is unbelievable like other you could there can be millionaires within the world and they although they have everything they could possibly want they don't have that happiness they don't have the happiness that you could have if you believe in the lord so please just repent your sins just take a moment to just say lord you know what i give up i give up in life now you take control of me you take control of my life my heart my thoughts and everything that i could possibly want in the world because i believe in you i trust in you because the god only wants the best for his children he never wants the worst after this after this lord then took me down the mountain and guided me to a huge dining room and the dining room was filled, was filled with saints and they were all wearing robes but before we entered they were all speaking and as we came towards the door like it was as if everyone was just quieting down because i think they realized that the lord was there and a beautiful lady came towards me she had golden like hair and she said to me you're a very lucky girl to visit heaven the lord is showing you everything that will benefit you your family and other people some things may be unbearable believe me but believe me it is worth it and this person was mary the mother of jesus christ and when she said this it is true that some things that within the visitation that so were unbearable it came to a point that every time after the visitation my body my human body was physically weak it was that i couldn't stand up and do things on my own that's how affected my body became it became really unbearable it came to a point when i, I actually I was asking, I told the Lord, like, I asked the Lord, please, like, I need this to be over because I can't take, my body can't, physically can't take it anymore. That's, I was really unbearable for me. And then the Lord, after this, the Lord took me to where I normally got changed into my clothes. And I did, but before, but before leaving the kingdom of heaven, as we walked down the pathway, um, this, the pavement, we stood in front of the gate and the Lord said to me, he said, look, daughter, I built all this for my for people like you, your family and all my children that will obey and believe in my word and are prepared for my coming. And that was when the Lord, it was as if he lifted me up to see an overview of heaven. Children of God, I can't like heaven. If someone has told you they've seen the end of heaven, that is a miracle. It is a miracle because the way I the way I saw it is that you couldn't see the end of it you could see the beginning where we were that was the beginning but you can never see the end of heaven that's how big the place is and it did it glows like it shines there's no such thing as light that you open and oh the light automatically appears everything it just glows with the grace of god you don't need to open no light everything the glory of god the the way everyone just praises the lord in heaven just shines the whole place there were places where it was gold and purely gold. There were places where it was multicolored and it made a beautiful color. It was unbelievable. And as the Lord took me down, he took me back home. And I realized that it is true the Lord loves his children. Like he, he built, he took his time to build all that for his children. Something that you can't even see the end of it. All the goodness of heaven for his children, not even for himself. For his children so that they can be happy on the last day. Now, why would you want to waste such a thing for Satan, for the goodness of, of earth? Yes, there are things on earth that are really good and, you know, you want to enjoy. But things in heaven, I would rather I wait, like live a boring life and wait for the goodness of heaven rather than enjoy myself here and end up sinning every single time I do something that I want to enjoy. I would wait until I get to heaven 
and be able to enjoy that that something that I know will last forever and it will never stop and it will never let allow me to enter sins because it's in heaven where the Lord is himself and the Lord then returned me um he brought me back into my normal body on the 29th of July the visit was from 8 20 to 9 13 I heard the Lord say I must talk with you Sarah and as usual he was standing at my window he gave me his hand and we flew to heaven when we got to heaven and the angel usually took my hand I got changed into my heavenly robe and once once done the Lord said I must show you something so he took my hand and led me to the big hole we had seen before but this time instead of actually going down it slowly we went down really really fast until we got to a place where there was a lot of people being tortured the smell there was disgusting like if it was my human body I think I would have passed out like went into a straight up coma because of the smell that's how bad it was and the noise was really loud as well all you could hear was people screaming for help but I and the Lord we kept going down and I saw so many cells and this was a surprise to me because usually I thought in hell there was just it was just a big whole place where people just got tortured all together but then there were also cells and each one cell it was black and had name tags on them and one of these cells it read the abortions and as we got toward as we walked towards it the gates opened by itself and there were, um, I could see that all, it, all I could see was women there was only women inside and these women are people that aborted children whilst alive on earth they were chained to walls and they were being stretched apart so forcefully that they would every time they was they were stretched apart it was as if if it was human you could hear every single bone literally stretch apart from each other they would rip apart that's how hard it was and they would scream in pain all all of this, of this is just because of slight sin it's just just something that they could have prevented with just aborting a child getting rid of a child a child that the lord has given you the child is a blessing you must know it so children of God out there, if you know of someone, anyone, it doesn't have to be a friend, or if it just has to be someone that you know that has aborted a child, please go and confront them, tell them to repent, because if they don't, that sin is what, that simple sin is what's going to lead them into hell. But whilst they're still on earth, they have a, they have a chance to repent, because if they do, that sin will be forgiven, and they will not end up in such a place. Um, when, when I saw this, every time they were being stretched apart, insects would also travel around their bodies. The Lord then took me to another cell, and this read the disobedient. And inside the cell, there were it was filled with people, but mostly it was young people. And these are people, children, like people that have disobeyed within the world. You just dis they dis decided to disobey the Lord and decided to do what they their heart tells them to do, not knowing that it's Satan who's pushing them to do these things. And after showing me this, and these people were also being tortured just for disobeying the Lord. After this, the Lord then showed me Satan's cell. And I was surprised because I thought on the last day Satan would be thrown into hell just like that. He didn't need no cell for himself. And the cell, was, it was big and it was colored black and filled with hot burning coals. Although once in hell it's like, it's fire, there was, it was burning, but I and the Lord weren't burning because I was with Christ. I wasn't burning. And Satan's cage, it, it was huge that there was really hot coal and it was a cage that he could never come out of. Once he was put in there, he could never come out of. Once done, the Lord then took me out of the hole and on top of the mantle that we usually sat on. And within a split of a second, we, it was like a clear river in front of us. We didn't need to move anywhere. It was just clear. It was just there. And it was the thing, the thing about the, the rivers in heaven and earth is that in heaven you can see right through it's clear blue pure like you could see right through and everything that was happening under but here like you would see it but you wouldn't see straight under it right right through it and on the river um thing we saw it was clear river but then there was docks like boat docks you see when you, if you're about to go fishing and how you park your boats that's how it was the lord then took me down there and we start. I was started walking down the little, the little, little place where you would normally, um, normally walk past to get onto the boat. And on the sides there were beautiful flowers. These flowers were so amazing. It's unbelievable. And then I and the Lord we got into the boat. And because there were rows, and but it, I didn't really need to use it because as we got on the boat started moving by itself. No one had to touch or anything. It started moving by itself. 
but because there were rows, I decided because I've never, I've, I've never actually had the t- chance to row whilst on Earth on a boat. So I was like, oh okay, let me let me try rowing by myself. So I just I grabbed the the rowing things and I started rowing. I didn't really have to, and because I was doing this, I don't know how it was that like, it was amazing. Like it filled me with so much happiness. It was as if I just won a billion pounds. Like that happiness, I was just there rowing and laughing with the Lord, and He was laughing as well. I then heard him say, I know a lot of my children like fishing, and I also know that your father loves fishing too, so I built this place for them. And when he said this, I realized that it is true once again, that he, the Lord knows what you, um, his children like. You may want beaches, you like everything. Everything that is on earth is in heaven, just a billion times better. Like, he, if he knows that my father loves fishing, because it is true, he, do, he does love fishing. If he knows that that's, that small little detail and he is able to build one for fish lovers up in heaven, that, that is incredible, incredible. Like, no father in, on, on earth right now could say, or uh, if a daughter, a child comes to them and say, Dad, I, like, I, want, um, I want a whole city named after me. No father will be able to build something like that. But the Lord can, because he is your father. He loves you that much. And once done, the Lord then took me and um, were then back on, the, on top of the rock on the mountain. And the Lord showed me a clear sea once more. It was just within a split of a second, everything was clear. But then after, it was like a second after, this whole sea turned into blood. And a lot of heads started popping out of the blood. And I asked the Lord, who are all those people? And he answered, those are people who are dying. Most of them are going to wait for judgment day. But sadly, some of them are going straight to hell. Their judgment has already been made. I was filled with happiness after when the Lord said this to me. And I asked him, I said, Lord, please can you show me where people go after they die and if I know anyone there. And the Lord chuckled and said, yes. And just then in front of us, it was like a huge hall. It was like the hall was so big and it was white and it was really calm. Like you could sense the peace. It was just peace there. No such thing as pain or nothing, just peace. The Lord pointed out to one of the person and he said, look at where I'm pointing. So I looked very closely and I saw my late grandpa, which is my mum's dad, who passed away in 2011. He just sat there. He looks at peace. It was like, it made me happy because it like, some that's one less thing that I had to worry about. Because I know he's at peace. I don't need to worry about nothing to do with that anymore. He was at so much peace, it was unbelievable. And the Lord pointed to another person and he said, look at that person over there. I looked over and I saw my late cousin, Sean Paul. And he and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, that's my uncle's son who died because of something to do with an operation. And the Lord re- shook his head and said yes and smiled. He is resting. And it is true because my my dad's brother's son, that which was which was my um, my cousin, he had died because of something to to do with an operation. And it made me happy to see that he was at pain. He was at peace. Sorry, like he didn't need to feel no more pain whatsoever. He was just there at peace. No pain for him. No more. And that made me happy. And within a split of a second again, the scene turned to just be- a beautiful horizon. And I said to the Lord, Lord, can you show me Abraham and Moses? And the Lord replied, he said, yes, I will, daughter. I know your father has prayed for me to show you Abraham. And while saying this, the Lord laughed. I then said to him, I said, Lord, please, can I stay here with you? It's peaceful and beautiful where I was on earth. It is noisy and filled with sins. I want to stay with you. When I said this, he laughed because when I said this, I was I was really serious. I really I would ra- I would prefer heaven than here. Honestly, I wanted to stay in heaven so bad at that time. I w- I was like, you know what? Forget hell, forget earth that even exists. I would rather I just stay there, and be able to live in such such beauty and such peacefulness forever, rather than come back to earth. And when he said it, he laughed and he said he said to me he said daughter it is not your time yet you are still very young and i want you to write all this down but i always remember i I, I, always, I want you to always remember that you have a house here so that on the last day you will be here forever and when he said this it made me happy with reassurance but then i still had the need to stay there i still wanted to stay there even if the lord said this to me and after saying this i went changed my clothes and the lord took me home on the 30th the visit was from 8 40 to 9 o'clock it was a very short and sharp visit and the Lord said to me I must talk with you he held out his hand and took mine 
and we walked to the end of um, Bishop's Road into my road and I lifted into the sky. And as we got into heaven, the angel took my hand and led me to a place where I got changed. And once changed, the Lord then took me to sit on a chair beside him. And in front of us was the globe as it is, the globe as it is. And it was spinning on its axis, on its axis. But next to it stood a huge TV. The TV was so big. And on that TV was everyone, every single person in this world and every single thing that was happening. And that was spectacular for me because I could not concentrate on one thing. I was shocked that the Lord could see everything just by that. He like, every single thing was happening. Every, even if it was hide, the person was hiding it, the Lord could see it right there. And I wondered to myself, I didn't ask the Lord, I wondered to myself and I said, how can the Lord possibly see everything all at once? And just then I heard the Lord answer me, even though I didn't physically ask him. He, he said, because I can be in a multiple of places all at once, daughter, I am the Lord. And this, this kind of, I guess it eased my mind a bit because I realized that it is true when they say that the Lord can see everything at once. He is the Lord. He can be here whilst he's in Africa, whilst he's in Asia. He can be anywhere all at once. And we sat there for a while just watching the screen. And then the Lord said, this is where I see everything that everyone is doing on earth. And after this, the Lord took, um, we sat there for her just staring right at everything that was happening. The Lord then took me back to a place where I normally got changed. And I saw a lot of people worshipping him. The angel took my hand and led me to a place where I could get changed. And once finished, before leaving the room, I, touched, I told the angel, whilst I feeling its wing, I said, you are very beautiful. She didn't reply, but she smiled. Once out of there, the Lord took my hand and took me in front of my house on earth and before leaving the lord said you need rest you are tired that is the only reason i showed you one thing today i shall speak with you soon daughter and the lord left and the reason why he said this is he was right after fast and the whole process of my spirit leaving my body in and out it really tired me out i was i was exhausted at that time and because of the fast as well and the fact that it was summer making it even worse because i was really hard dehydrated I needed as much rest as I could get because I was that exhausted. On the 31st of July, the visit was from 9.13 to 10.13. And as usual, the Lord came and said, I need to talk with you, daughter. He then gave me his hand and um, and I took it and we went up to heaven. They only took my hand and after getting changed, the Lord said to me, I must show you something. And immediately we began walking a street paved of gold. On each side there were palaces. And each one, as I said before, each one had name tags on them. And um, the Lord then, we, we, he told me, we stopped at one of the palaces and he told me to read the name on it. And it said Benjamin Boyanga. I was so happy to see that my dad's name was, he, that was on the palace in heaven. And after this, because it wasn't my house, my palace, I, I was not allowed to go and visit and visit the interior of the house. I could only stay outside the compound because it wasn't my palace. It was just his. We then carried on walking down the same. I think it was. It was the same. It was the same road, and just the palaces were either side. And I was really happy. And then the, the Lord told me to read another um, name tag on another different palace, and it said Jonathan Boyanga. I smiled because this is the name of my older brother, the oldest one in my family. And then the Lord told me that um, when I saw this, I was happy because I knew that when if I go back, when I went back to um, on to my normal body to tell him. He was over the moon to know that he has a house in heaven. He was absolutely shocked. The Lord then told me that he needed to show me the beach. And within a split of a second, we were on the beach. The beach is so beautiful. Like the sand there, I don't know how to say it. It's like it's clear and it's gorgeous. It's just unbelievable. Um, we, I then said to the Lord after we started walking a bit, I said, I said to her, I said, Lord, you truly know what your kids' desires and needs are. And he replied, yes, I do. I know my kids love the beach, so I built one for them. And when, he, when the Lord said this is because the beach on earth will lead you to so many sins. Like you'll think, in your mind, you wouldn't even have a thought of actually going and sinning. You'll have the thought of going there and saying, I'm just going to enjoy myself. But whilst there, you may end up doing sins that you normally would never have thought of, one even had an idea of wanting to do. But the beach in heaven is so 
it's just clear it's like there's no such thing as sins there it's just it's pure you just go and have fun and go back the way you had the idea of going there and um, after this we carried on walking on the beach and on the other side there were lots of shops I heard the Lord say to me he said you can get anything you need in those shops but you don't need to pay anything it's all for free in heaven everything's for free there you don't need to bother oh, um, oh where's the money I need to go buy this nope you just go and get what you want and come back up because it's your father's he built it for you we then walked forward to where there was a football pitch and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you know I hate football on earth. It's like everywhere you go, there's football. And it is true. Everyone that knows me will know that I absolutely hate football. Like, it's something that I hate. I just hate football so much. I, I don't even understand the point of it. And the fact that I said this to the Lord. And the Lord laughed when I said this. And he replied, I know, but your older brothers and younger brother love football. So I built a pitch for them. Believe me, the football in heaven is so much more enjoyable than earth. The Lord then took me to, on the rock that we usually sat on, on top of the mountain, and asked him, I said, Lord, please can you show me Angel Michael, leader of the army? And he replied, yes, daughter. And in front of us, all of a sudden, there was like, it was like an army right there. It's like, I, it didn't need, no, we didn't need to walk anywhere, fly anywhere. It was just sat there, and just in a split of a second, there was the army. And the, we then, the Lord then took me down the mountain and I ran towards Michael. He is unbelievably tall. Michael is, is that Angel Michael is so big, like, compared to me. I didn't even get up to his weight, let alone waist, let alone his knee. That's how big he is. And instead of, like, normally you would go up to someone and say hey to start a conversation. I just went up to him and started poking him. I just stood there for a good two minutes just poking him to try and get his attention to see me. That's how small I was. And he looked at me and smiled and I said, you're Michael, the one who God ordered to throw Satan out of heaven. And he said, yes, I am. I did it with the power that the Lord gave me, not by my own strength. And when he said this, I was shocked because I thought he would say because by the power I had. But the fact that he's in heaven and he's able to glorify the Lord, even whatever he says, he goes, but the glory goes back to the Lord. It's like. It kind of it surprises me because there's a lot of people nowadays, children of God. There's a lot of people within the world that they take the glory of God. They think they do something and they think, oh, I did that. I did that by my own strength. When in reality, the glory should go back to the Lord because if it wasn't for God, you would never have done that. If the Lord didn't allow you to do that, you would that would never have happened. So, like for the fact that Michael is already living within the goodness that's there, he's living within the tread that. The precious, the precious, the precious, the treasures and precious facts of heaven. The fact that he's living within it and he still is able to glorify the Lord, kind of surprises me. And when he said this, um, thing, I I said to him, I then said, "Can you carry me on your shoulder?" And he smiled and said, "Yes, I can." When I mean he picked me, he was so big, he picked me up with just one hand. He lifted me up from the floor and put me on his shoulder. And I, I was I was surprised, I was unbelievably surprised. And I heard um thing when he did this, I was filled with joy. And because where we were looking, it was like this there was a whole army looking towards him. It was as if he was directing them before we had got there. He was speaking to them about something. And they all just stood there straight it was in order. And I just started waving because I was filled with so much happiness. I just started sat there waving. And I sensed that the Lord was laughing because he rested his back on some sort of wall that was there. The angels waved back because I expect I didn't expect them to wave back. They all started waving back, and we all started laughing in joy. Like we just stood there laughing and waving. The Lord then said, "Sarah, we must go now." Angel Michael put me down, and the Lord took my hand. I looked back and waved by Michael, and he replied, "By Sarah." The Lord then took me to a place where I saw one of the thieves that repented on the cross, because when the Lord was crucified, as as most of us know that there was he was crucified with two thieves. One of them, before dying, he repented and repented and asked the Lord to help him to get into heaven. And the Lord had promised him to get into heaven. And the other one was too stubborn and decided not to. And that thief is in heaven as we speak right now. He is living the treasures. He's living the goodness of heaven because of something so small of repenting. That's it. Because if he didn't repent, he wouldn't have gone into heaven. All he had to do was, God, I realized that I have my wrongs and I realized that I've done wrong. Please forgive me. But on the last day, take me to heaven. 
and that's it that's all that that's all that he needs to say for him to end up in heaven and and when i said this um the lord the lord took me towards the thief and he replied yeah, um and i said to him i said you are the thief and he replied yes i was but because i repented i am now a clean person glory be to god who promised me heaven this is the second time the person that he is in heaven he didn't he didn't really need to glorify the lord because he already is living in heaven but because he realizes that the lord is capable of everything all he did was glorify the lord everyone there always everything they said at the end there has to be a glorification to lord everything they said at the end the lord has to be glorified so if people in heaven that are already living the goodness of heaven can do it why can't we you see they can do it they're already living everything we're not even there yet and we, we decide not to glorify the lord but they're already there and they still glorify the lord that just shows how grateful the lord is that how grateful that is important for us to glorify the lord because he just by just by allowing us to breathe today is we need to glorify him for that and um, the lord then took said um i must show you something and we left walked into another road that which were full of palaces and we stopped in front of a house and he said, Sean, I'm Thomas. And I said to the Lord, that's the lady whose book I am reading right now. And he replied, yes, she is working for me. Therefore, on the last day, you will all see her. And after this, the Lord then took me to a mountain. It was a different mountain. I would say it was a different mountain. And in front of us was a big book. And I asked the Lord, Lord, is that the book of life? And he replied, yes, it is. Move closer. And as I was moving closer to it, the pages were turning by itself. Like no one needed to come and try and flick the pages. It was doing it by its own grace. And once in front of the book, the, the pages kind of stopped. And I t I, the Lord told me to look carefully at the names. And as I read the names, I realized that it was all my family's names. And I kept reading it over and over again like a song to remember it. And as the lo um, book of life started flicking again, after seeing my family's names, I saw that some names were being rubbed off and some some new ones were being written on, and I asked the Lord, Lord, why are the names being why are the names coming off? And He replied, Because those people knew me, but decided to change paths and do the worldly things. People have a hundred percent chance of being saved because I haven't come back yet. And it is true, because everyone that is on earth, if you know that you believe in the Lord with your full heart. That you know you're not in and out you're just there you believe in the lord your name is already written in the book of life but that mo that just one moment the moment you decide to change and pass and do something worldly things that you know does not please god your name is rubbed off it doesn't need to be the lord doesn't go rub this person's name off no it's automatically rubbed off and another person's one's rubbed on so every time a person repents their sins their name is written on the book of life like it's there and if the more you carry on with the lord it will always stay there but if you decide to change paths it'll come off and another one will be written on until the next time you repent and it is true because everyone has a hundred percent chance of being saved at the moment because the lord haven't hasn't come back yet i then asked the lord can i see abraham and he replied yes you can we then went to a place near where i normally got changed and abraham came towards me and if you recall i asked the lord to see abraham on the 29th of july and I, but he showed me it at this day, meaning it shows patience. If you have patience with the Lord, he will show you exactly what he needs to show you. Don't rush the Lord. He does things at his own time because at his time, the when he does things is the best time for him to do those things. It's the best time, the best time that will benefit you and your family. So you don't need to rush him to do anything. And then I also um, think when when we got to near where i normally got changed abraham came towards me he seemed really young but yet he still had the long white beard that he had and his hair was really long as well and pure white and i said Ab you're abraham we are your descendants on earth and he said yes i am tell your family and father to carry on working for the lord because the price is much bigger than anyone can think of tell everyone in your family that asked that i said hello okay take care no distractions and we'll see you soon and the reason why he said this, like when he said that the prize is much bigger than anyone can think of, it's not just particularly for my family. It doesn't just, although it benefits my family, but it also benefits anyone else out, out there that is serving the Lord. Do not stop because just because you see that things ain't working out for you. Because once Satan realizes that you're chosen by the Lord and that you're working for him, 
He knows that there's something good in front of you. He knows that there's blessings in front of you. So he will do anything to try and move you away or try and distract you and allow tell, try and tell you that not to do this and not to do that. But then the thing is that don't pay attention to that. Don't see that because you if you the, if you pay attention to that you'll become a sinner. You'll leave the God's way and destroy abandon your own blessings that the Lord has chosen for you. But what you need to do is just stay patient and carry on say every time you see some things like that come on just pray and say lord look at this what is happening look at this and what he's trying to do just banish that punt that yeah banish him in fact just pray and tell the lord to take control and that is it and the prize that i guarantee you before you leave this earth that we live in i guarantee you the prize is much bigger than anyone will ever think of and after this the music that i heard i could hear music playing the music is really really unique and that it's so unique that I felt it just gave me the need to dance. It was made me feel really bubbly and happy inside. I then changed clothes and the Lord took me back. But before leaving, he said, you may eat, daughter, but as from midnight, you must begin fast again. I still have a lot to show. He hugged me and I came back to my, my, my whole body, my normal body. And this was after a week of fasting. On the 1st of August, the visit was from... Eight from nine thirty to eleven ten, an hour and forty minutes of um of the visitation. The Lord started as usual by saying my name, um, saying Sarah must speak with you. He took my hand, my spirit left my body, and we got to uh, on to heaven. And once that, once ch I got changed, the Lord then took me in front of a TV. It was, I, I think it was similar to the TV that we had seen before. We sat, I sat beside him. And then on the TV, I saw a lady kneeling down bes beside her child. He, the child was laying down and looked critically ill. And she was praying. And it looked like without, within her, she had no doubts whatsoever. She believed in that what she was praying will be done exactly what had she said. And within a split of a second, the child turned happy and felt much better and felt healthy again. The Lord then took me to the beach after this. And we sat down. We were there for a while just looking out into the ocean. Then the Lord took me to a place where it was dark and filled with people wearing greyish clothes. They, see, they all seemed lost and was walking around with their heads on the floor like lost people. And I asked the Lord, Lord, who are those people? And he replied, those are people who serve me but aren't doing it with all their heart. They are lost. If they don't repent before judgment, they, they will be thrown in the pit of fire. And after saying this, the Lord, um, seeing this, I said to the Lord, I, the Lord said to me, he said, a post of Sikatinda is in heaven. And a post of Sikatinda is the father of prof the, the, um, the current prophet Nehemiah um, that is in charge of the church of the living God worldwide. That is the father who passed away in 2005. And when he said this, the Lord took me to see him. And where he was sitting, it was as if he was sitting in some sort of chair and there were two angels beside him and it was as if, as if he was guarding something. And when... Um, when when I saw him, the, he stood up and came towards me. And I said to him, I said, Apostle Sikatenda, you're in heaven. And he replied, yes, I am. Tell your father that the Lord loves him very much, loves him and your family very much. Tell him not to forget what I told him in White City, okay? And I replied, I replied, okay. After this, the Lord then took me to a place where a lot of people were dancing. And, like, the music was so, I, I can't. I can't explain like the music on earth like you'll hear music sorry you'll hear music and it was like you'll feel oh, okay it's music you just you can sit there but I can tell you the music in heaven it's like the moment you hear it you have to dance I'm sorry but you can't you can't contain yourself from that you can't say oh, I'm not gonna dance even though it's good you just have to dance you 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 won't even know how your body will start dancing by itself you just won't know it it'll just do it by itself and as I was dancing with them, I was laughing as well, in joy. And once done, the Lord then took me to a place where I normally got changed. And within, within me, I asked the Lord if I could see Abraham to pass on a message from my father. And he laughed and replied, yes, you can. We then stopped near my changing place. And Abraham came forward and he, and he said to me, he said, Sarah, you're back. And I replied, yes, I am, Abraham. My dad said... My dad said to tell you thank you for the advice and that he shall continue serving the Lord. And um, he replied, that's good. Um, and that was it. The Lord then took me back. See, during the times of the visitation, it was like my family, 
because every evening I would go and tell my family what I had seen that day after writing everything down, it was that all they had to do was tell pass on a message to me, and I'll pass on a message to my father, to to the Lord, to the Lord once I go visit, once he comes and takes me. It will see it as BBM text messaging or internet. It was like internet connection basically. You should see yourself as as an internet connection as well, because all you have to do is just see yourself see yourself as the say the connection is praying and the internet is between you and the lord you're the person who's trying to connect to the internet and you're trying to get to the service like the prayer the only way you can reach that the, that connection is by you praying and that's the only way you can reach the connection otherwise there's no internet connection see it as that all you have to do is pray the moment you start praying concentrate just put your mind at peace Put your mind in front of the throne of the Lord. Just see it and him on the cross. Concentrate. And I can guarantee you, before you stand up, the Lord will speak to you. Maybe not that day, maybe the next day, but I can guarantee you, you'll hear the word of the voice of the Lord. Because you've, you've, you have a communication, you have the connection. Because through that prayer and that fast, you have a connection through to him. That you can speak to him anytime you want and he'll listen to you. On the, fir- um, on the 2nd of August, the visit was from... 9 15 to 12 12, 10 12 and as usual the lord came to me and said sarah i must speak with you he took my hand and we flew to heaven and once changed the lord told me he needed to show me something he led me to a huge tv again and we sat down and i sensed that the lord had gone back to his godliness as god and in the tv there was chaos people were running everyone screaming and that it was some some people were even trying to hide but it was impossible you could not hide from that He's just a big no, because everywhere you tried to hide the Lord, it was all open to the Lord. And the, I heard the Lord say to me, he said, This daughter is judgment day, the day I will return for my children. I will come like a thief. Nobody knows the date, day, minute, or second. Tell my children to repent and come back to me, so that they can enjoy the city that I built for them. For I, the Lord, is coming back soon. It's coming back very soon, sooner than you all think. And when the Lord says this, is He is warning us. The Father, our Father, as Himself, is warning us. Like you've read it in the Bible, but He is warning us. Like He's telling us that I am coming soon. You don't. No one knows the day the Lord is coming back. No one knows the date, time, or day, or even year He's coming back. But when He, the words that you how you must concentrate very clearly. On when the on the words that the Lord say, He said, "I'm coming back very soon, sooner than you all think." And when He said this, I kind of got frightened myself because I was like, "This could mean He could come back tomorrow, He could come back the day after." And this uh, this like this is unlike. Take this as an urgent message to children of God out there. Please, please, please. If it's now that you if you're watching me right now, this moment, just take a minute, just. Paul, stop everything you're doing. Just take minutes to just repent. Because you don't know the time God's coming back. He could come back any minute from them. You can, he could come back within the next five minutes. And if he catches you out, or out of God and that you haven't been able to repent, you're going to end up in hell for something so small, so tiny. So just take time to repent. Just please, please, please just repent your heart. Please, just I'm begging you, repent your heart so that you are able to end up in heaven on the last day and after the lord said this he took me to meet apostle sikatenda and when i saw him i said to him apostle sikatenda dad and the family said they love you very much for you showed us a true god he hasn't left the coat you gave him the day you took, he took you to hospital with the small amount he has he is helping the work of lord he also hasn't left mother sarah or forgotten what you told him if by grace ask the lord to show you the work he is doing and the reason I said this, when I say coats, I don't mean a proper, actual coat that he's going to wear. It means that the faith, he, he left us with, he left my father with faith, with trust that everything to follow the Lord, that nothing in this world matters but the Lord. And that has been able to help him throughout life in all sorts of situations. And he replied, he said, that is very good. Tell your father to go and confront Mother Sarah to not worry about me. I am at peace. Tell them to carry on with the Lord so that we may see each other on the last day. 
the Lord then said that we had to go. So we, as we started walking back, I said to him, I said, Lord, my dad and my family said that we love you very much. And he replied, I love you too very much. On the 3rd of August, the visit was from 5.30 to 6.27. The Lord said to me that morning in an urgent voice, I must speak with you, Sarah. He took my hand and as we went to heaven, I felt like this visit was important, but also something that I and the world needed to know. And once changed into my heavenly gown, I said to the Lord, Lord, I must really speak with you. And if you'd may do me grace to see Apostle Sikatinda once more. And he replied to me, he said, okay, let us go and sit down. He took me to the beach, we sat down and I began talking. And I said to him, I said, Lord, Mother Sarah asked me to ask you, is Prophet Neymar on path or not? Has he become a pagan or, or is he still working for you, Lord? Because people are talking. And the Lord replied, tell Mother Sarah that Prophet Neymar is still working for me and doing a very good job at it. Tell her that, tell her, tell her and your father to close their ears completely for Satan's time is soon running out and he is in trouble. Let us go now. The Lord took me to see Apostle Sikatinda and I asked him the exact same question that I, I was told to ask. And he replied, tell your father to tell Mother Sarah that I left him a true God to continue with, to continue the word. The Lord chose him to continue the word, um, to continue the ministry. He is in the right path and he is not a pagan, no. Be aware of Satan's kingdom, for as we speak, they are trembling. They know that their time is coming to an end. Therefore, they are out to destroy your family and theirs by trying to cause trouble. But hold on tight to your faith and the Lord, because with, with him is the only way you can win the battle. I repeat, hold on to your faith and the Lord and close your ears to what bad things people are saying for satan's dark kingdom is trembling and i replied may the lord bless you and he replied may the lord bless you too and this doesn't just concern me and my family personally this concerns every child of god that is out there if you know that you're you're serving the lord if you know that you're a servant of god do not let people's bad words try and trick you out of place into leaving the lord People in this world will always have something to say or judge people. That's just the way it is. Everyone will everyone will always have some bad opinion about other people. That's just you can't change that. You can't go into them and just change the way they see you. But do not let their words and their opinions stop you from working from God. Because all that is is just Satan trying to trying to distract you, trying to make you stop believing in God and stop working for Him. And you must really be aware of this. Once you see that something something like this is happening right now, even if it's happening right now, just close your ears completely. If you hear what they say, you hear what they say, just say, okay, God bless them. Let God judge, me, judge them. You don't judge them because you have no right to judge them. Just say, let the Lord judge them because he created them. And judgment will be done upon them. You just carry on your way. Just carry on. Focus on the Lord. Hold on to your faith on the Lord. Because the Lord is big. He has planned big things for your future and your family. He has planned big blessings for you in the future. You just have to know. Find a way to be able to hold on to that. So that Satan doesn't come to distract you. The Lord then led me to a place where it was full of babies. And he said this is where all the babies stay. They are well looked after by those angels. And there, was, there were angels surrounding the whole place at that moment. And within the room, the angels bowed down as we entered at us. And just as I was about to bow down at them, the Lord stopped me and said, They bow down to you. You don't do the same to them. Okay, daughter? That place over there is where all the children that have been aborted stay. But on the other side is where the babies that have not yet been born stay. I stood there and looked around until the Lord led me out. And we started walking on the road that led us to a big room. Children of God, you must know that if you're a woman out there and you've aborted a child, don't think that that child you've aborted is gone, dead, completely forgotten about. That child is back in heaven waiting for you. That child goes back to the Lord. It's precious, been carefully looked after because children are precious to the Lord. Children are very, very precious to the Lord. And they are carefully looked after by the angels. As we started walking, the Lord led me to a big white room. And when we entered, it was filled with joyful young children, like around about the age of four to five years old. And one of them, one of them is a young child. It was a girl, young girl, beautiful. She came towards me and I, I knelt down. She came and hugged me, in fact. And I knelt down and I asked her, are you okay? She didn't speak, but she shook her head to say yes and smiled. 
and as we were leaving she waved goodbye at me and i did the same i didn't know who the young girl was i thought it was just a normal girl that would just you know ju that was just um that was that was just there and realized that we were there so she came towards to hug us the lord then took me to a place where it filled with fruits it was like a big room and in the middle was a path that could that people could walk up and down and it was gorgeous the lord picked one fruit for me and one for himself and we sat and ate it the taste of the fruit in heaven is it's a billion times tastier than things on earth like just one taste could fill you up for a whole year like if you're on earth if you taste the food of heaven it can fill you up for a whole year you want to eat over and over again that's it that's just your food for the time and we sat down and ate it and nothing tastes like it the lord then said that he needed to show me one more thing and we went in front of a screen and it was a long table and the dark the place was really dark and there were people sitting around it wearing black and black hoods and the whole room was just filled with darkness but everything within it was shaking really hard and because of where i was looking at the screen the person that was sitting is like the leader was sitting with its back towards me and it had really big horns and it was disgusting from the back and then the lord said to me he said that daughter is the kingdom of satan he is hideous so i don't want you to see his face as we speak it is trembling trembling very hard because it's time is running out very quickly as the days go by we must go now and as we as we start going back um, to where i normally got changed the, i got changed then the lord took me home but before leaving he said do not forget to tell father your father and mother sarah what has been said okay daughter and i replied oh yes lord on the 4th of august the visit was from 6 15 to 7 a.m the lord came and as usual said i must speak with you sarah he took my hand and we flew to heaven and after me getting changed the lord took me to the beach where we sat he then said sarah my daughter as from today i want you to eat until i give you my next order for you to fast but do not stop praying and when he said this i started crying and i replied i said why lord are you going to stop visiting me i don't i don't want to stop coming to heaven please lord and he replied no daughter i will still bring you here but i just want you to relax for now i've shown you the most important things that i needed to show you don't forget to write down everything i say to you okay i will show you more things and when he said this I personally, my, in my thoughts, I thought it was just going to stop visiting me and that was the end of the whole visitation. So I got kind of worried about that. I got really upset about that. And another thing is, he's, he's, when he said, don't forget to write down everything I say to you, okay? That is one of the reasons why you see me reading from this um, sheet of paper, the papers I'm reading from. It's because the Lord ordered me to write everything down and when I'm testifying, I have to read it from the paper so that I say exactly what happened and exactly what he said. Not so to add anything or not to take anything away, but exactly what he says. And after this, um, the Lord, we started walking around. We started, we started walking around. The Lord said, um, "Think I have shown you the most important things," as he said. And we started walking around, and and then he said to me, he said, "Tell Mother Sarah not to worry. I know she is doing the best she can to please me." Tell her everything is complete in the name of Jesus Christ. Also tell her to move her hand and foot bit by bit. I'm very happy with everything she is doing. I then asked the Lord, Lord, who is the little girl that hugged me on the last visit? And he replied, that is your older sister that passed away at a young age. She is in heaven, for she knew that I would bring you there as I had informed her. And when he told me this is because before me or any of my older brothers were born, I had an older sister who was born before me and me and my family were born who were before any of us were born she was the first daughter in the family and she passed away at the age of four four or five she passed away at the age of four or five her name was rachel and i have never gotten i've heard about her but i've never really gotten to even know about her and i've completely forgot about everything and the reason another reason why the lord showed me this because because my father's a pastor when he hears things like this he can't just jump into conclusion and say okay it's true it's true i know it's true even if i'm his daughter he's not allowed to do that he has to ask for some sort of proof from the lord himself he needs to know proof from him and for that proof he uh, he had um he asked the lord privately in his own time in his private prayer without telling anyone in the family or me he asked the lord he said lord if this is true 
please show my daughter, please show Sarah, my daughter, her older sister who had passed away before. And because I had never seen her before, I've never, I've never ever seen, a, not even a picture of her before. I didn't know who she is. So to prove that every, all this was true, the Lord has showed me that my older sister is in heaven, in fact. And that's the first time I ever, I've ever seen her in my whole entire life. And it made me feel happy about that. And then after this, the Lord then, I knelt down at his feet, I knelt down at the Lord's feet and wiped his sandals. They were golden. He had holes in his legs from where he was um, where he was crucified. And I then said to him, I said, you are truly the Lord. And he answered, tell your father just to hold on for a while until I give my next orders as to what I want to happen with these testimonies. Okay, we must go now. And the reason why I said this, because when I was telling my dad this, he was really excited and he was started kind of giving hints to the church before but without asking the Lord's permission. He started giving hints and he shouldn't have done that. He should have asked for the Lord's for permission first. So that's why the Lord had told me to tell him to not to say anything until he himself gives the orders as what to do. And as I went, um, as we, as I went to get changed, the Lord went back onto his throne. And once done, the Lord took me back. But before leaving, he said, I shall speak with you soon, daughter. And I replied, okay. On the 5th of August, the visit was from 8.45 to 9.16 a.m. The Lord came and as usual he said, Sarah, I must speak with you. He then flew us both to heaven and once there I got changed. The Lord then took my hand and walked me around the city of heaven. We walked around for a really long time. He took me and we saw the beautiful houses of heaven that we had seen before. All, all golden and each one of them had name tags on them. I didn't read it all because we were just passing by. When, um, but then the Lord said once again, I built these houses for my children to enjoy, daughter. In heaven they have everything they will ever need. It makes me happy when I see at least one person come back to eye the Lord. And when we walked, we, we then walked to the beach and we sat there for a while just looking out to the horizon until the Lord said that we must go. And he took me to get changed and took me home. The reason why the Lord, the Lord is saying this because one person, he built the whole of heaven not for himself to enjoy, but for his own children to enjoy. It's the, for the happiness of his children. And... And the fact that at least one person, when at least one person in the whole entire world, there's like billions of people in the world, well, at least when one person repents their sins and comes back to the Lord and says, Lord, I give you my life, I've received you as the Lord and Savior, it makes him so happy. And just imagine one person making him that happy. What about more than one people? What if it's more than a hundred people? How would he feel? He'll be over the moon. He'll feel so happy. It's like a party up in heaven. For one person, if one person comes back to him, it's like a huge party for that one person, just for him for coming back and believing in God once more. On the sixth of August, the visit was from eight fifty to nine fifty. The Lord came and said, "Sarah, I must speak with you." He then took my hand and led me up to heaven. And once there, as usual, I got changed, and he led me around the city. After walking, he then took me to see the palace that had my name on it. We went inside and I looked around once more and I would still feel real, real happiness because I saw I was able to visit my palace once more. He then took me out of the palace and we started walking, walking around the city. And he said to me, he said, I built this for my children, daughter. After the, and after the Lord said this, he took me to the beach where we sat and watched the horizon. The Lord, throughout the visit, the Lord kept repeating the fact that he built such a beautiful city for his children. And this allowed me to see how important it is for him for that, so that his children stop sinning and come back to him. Because it, is, it causes the Lord real pain to see that his children, he built such a wonderful, beautiful, amazing city for his children to enjoy on the last day. And it hurts him that all his children just decide to leave him and go do what they what pleases them whatever they want to do and after sitting after sitting for a while the um, the lord then said to me he said tell your father i only want him to testify about the reality of hell that is all my children must know the re this reality but the rest he shall wait on my commands okay daughter and i replied yes lord the Lord then took me to a place of worship and he went back on his throne and along with the rest of the saints I joined with him I joined him in glorifying his name. After the whole glorification um, of of God's name he said that we had to go. I got changed but before leaving I turned around and I said to him I said 
Lord, you truly did build a beautiful city. May your name be glorified. And after saying this, the Lord took me back home. But before leaving, he said, don't forget to tell your father what I said. Okay, I nodded and I came back. Children of God, on the, some of these visits, I will have to skip because during when the Lord gave me permission to be able to testify about these these testimony, I have I me and my father had asked him, should we, should we say everything, including personal family stuff, things that that is that is only relevant to our family and private, or should we leave that out? And the Lord allowed me to leave everything that is family and personal out of the testimony because that is only our family business but everything else should be said and that's the reason why some of the days i may skip or some things I'm, i am skipping for the um for the confidential of my family on the 8th of august the visit was from 8 40 to 9 43 the lord visited me as usual and, I, and said daughter i must speak with you he took my hand led me to heaven and i got changed once there once changed the lord the end um the Lord then took me to a big screen and we stood in front of it and the Lord started showing me short clips of people. The Lord then said, this is how Satan gets into people, look. I looked and I saw two people. One was showing their friend a nice car that they had just recently bought, it was a beautiful car. And I saw, um, and the, the other friend, the other friend was just looking around whilst the, other, the friend that had bought the car was explaining how they bought it and everything. And just at that moment, I saw like a dark shadowy figure. It was a really dark shadow figure. It was wearing all black. It inserted itself into the other friend that was listening to the other friend say to the friend that had bought the car. They was, the person that was listening to him inserted the, je um, the demon inserted inside them. And that was jealousy. It's the demon of jealousy. And at that moment, the other friend that was listening or viewing the car became really really jealous it's unbelievable so i'm really jealous and that you must know that when the lord blesses you with something yeah it's i'm not saying that it's not okay to talk about so obviously you thank the lord in church you testify the lord blessed me with this this and this but you must be very careful who you talk about it with after outside the church you must be really 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 careful because your happiness is someone else's sadness your happiness other people will take it as their uh, like sadness that will make them really angry your happiness could cause jealousy to other people your blessing could cause other people to plan all sorts on your life so whatever it is thank the lord and pray to the lord to guard you so that none of these things occur in your life and make sure that you be careful who you speak to it with. Don't just go and blab about it to every single person in the world. Don't just go, you call this person, oh, guess what, I got this happen. Guess what, this happened. Guess what, this happened. They may say, they may sound as if they're happy for you. Their facial expression may seem as if they're happy for you. But you can't see inside their hearts. You don't know what they're thinking inside their hearts. You don't know what they're planning on doing inside their hearts. Only the Lord knows that. So that's why you must be very, very careful but with what comes out of your mouth to other people especially when it comes to your blessing the lord then showed me another scene and this was two friends on the phone one friend was telling someone else some good news that that about what happened to her but just then i saw a shadow a shadowy demon again and it inserted hatred into the friend that was listening to the good news and suddenly the other friend started hating the um their friend just because she was sharing good news with her the Lord then showed me the last scene and within it was a person in sh inside the shop. The person seemed to be looking around at clothes and accessories. It was as if they're just walking around having a wander around um, win like window shopping. But then just then I saw next to the person there was a dark demon the need to steal. That was a demon of stealing. It inserted itself inside that person. And that person, did, they didn't seem to realise what exactly was going on. Just then, the person just took stuff, put it in the bag and walked out. So basically, they just stole things. Even though they knew it was wrong, but they just stole it and just left. And that is the demon of stealing. Children of God, wherever you may be at this moment of time, please, please be careful of the, th the feelings you have within you. Some feelings are good, which come from the Lord, but some are bad that Satan tries pushing forcefully pushing inside you so that you can fall into sin and disobey the lord if you if you think that any of these feelings at all any of these bad feelings are coming towards you 
I would suggest you stop, you pray, you banish it, all them bad, bad spirits and feelings. And I guarantee you'll be fine after. Because then Satan will know, oh, this person has realized that their whole, who, whom they believe in, the king that they believe in. So I can't try with them anymore. But that doesn't mean they won't try again. They will try again. You just have to be aware of it. And so, um, be able to realize that, okay, these are Satan's spirits trying to make me do all sorts. So I should pray right now to be able to banish it. After this, the Lord then um, the, um, the Lord then took me to where I got changed and took me back home. On 9th of August, the visit was from 8.30 to 9.25. The Lord came as usual and said, I must speak with you. He gave me his hand and took me to heaven. And whilst changed, the Lord then took me, um, we sat on the beach for a while, just looking out into the horizon. The Lord then stood me up and we started walking to a place that it looked like a park. We didn't stay long, we just carried on walking. We then came to a place where it had shops and I asked the Lord, Lord, would the food ever run out? And he replied, no, daughter. Although I knew the answer, I still wanted to hear the Lord say it himself because it gave me pleasure every time the Lord spoke. He then took me to a room that was filled with fruits, all sorts of fruits. It was like a big garden with just fruits and there was a pathway in the middle that people could walk down. All the fruits, is like they all made like a different pattern, coloured, some sort of pattern thing. And after a while, just looking at the fruits, he then took me and we started walking around the city again. We just started walking through the roads and the palaces, just past the palaces. And I said, and then the Lord said to me, he said, Yes, most things I do for my children are according to what they have asked I, the Lord. And while saying this, I could sense the Lord smiling. The Lord then said that we had to go, so he took me back to get changed and led me home. When the Lord said that um, the most things he does is because of what his children asked him to do, it's not just, it's like, he's saying this for a reason. If you pray to the Lord and ask him, for example, if you ask him for something small as a phone, he'll only give you a phone. That is all, because he knows that's all that you've asked for. But if you know, if you believe in the Lord, that you trust in your Lord, you ask him for billions and billions of pounds, he will give you exactly what you've asked for. All you have to do is have patience and faith. Because there'll come to a time when you realise, God, but I asked you for this time a long time ago. Why is he still not giving it to me? That's because he's not answering me. No, he has heard what you've asked him. And he will do exactly that. He's waiting for the right time. Because the Lord only does these things at the right time that he knows will benefit you. Because he can't give it to you at the wrong time and let things destroy your blessings. No, he will give it to you at the right time that he knows you will be able to enjoy the things you have asked him. You will be able to enjoy and live within it for a really long time that will carry on generations after generation. Because he can't give it to you at the, at the wrong time so that Satan can come and destroy it for you. So you need to have patience and faith within your Lord and all this will come true. On the 10th of August, the visit was from 8.15 to 9.10. As usual, the Lord came to me and said, I must speak with you, daughter. He let out, he held out his hand and once that I got changed and the Lord took me to the beach. We stood there and watched the horizon and then the Lord took me to where people were worshipping him and said, these people are all saints, daughter. A lot of them can be found in the Bible. I will show you them in the next visit, okay? And after leaving there, the Lord took me and we started walking around the city once more. We walked for a while and then the Lord told me that we had to go, so he escorted me back home. On the 11th of August, the visit was from 9.15 to 10.25. That morning, the Lord visited me, held out his hand and said, I must speak with you, daughter. I took his hand and he led me to heaven. And once there, the angel took my hand and normally got changed as usual. After I finished, the Lord took me to the beach. We didn't stay very long. After all, we started walking around and the Lord led me to a big room where all the saints were sitting around. They were all sitting around a huge table and they were all speaking. But as we entered the room, everyone went silent. It was pin drop silent. They all knew the Lord was there, so they had to be quiet. And then the Lord, um, the Lord then pointed at one of the saints and said, That daughter is Moses. After saying that, Moses looked at me and waved, so I waved back. The Lord then pointed out other people that he had already shown me in the previous visits, like Abraham, Mary, the thief, but he also showed me Joseph. They all kind, they all kind of looked similar to each other, but you could still tell that who was who and this was this person in a way. 
It's very, it's very strange how it all happens, but it's really clever as well. They all turned around and waved, so I waved back, um, and I was filled with joy. After the Lord then took me to where everyone came together to worship him, and he went back into his throne. So I joined him with the worship, and the experience was amazing. Once done worshipping, the Lord then said that we had to go, so he took me back home. The worship in heaven is, is a worship that you can do over and over again, years after years after years, you will never get tired of it. Because things like, say if you hear a song in the world, today will be your favourite, tomorrow will be your favourite, a month after will be your favourite, but two months after you'll get tired of it. And you wouldn't want to hear it as much anymore, but the worship in heaven is different. You just want to carry on with worshipping God over and over again. It fills you with joy and the joy never stops. So every time you hear it, you have to want to worship the Lord. It's like something that you just feel like doing all the time. On the 12th of August, the Lord didn't visit me. I woke up that morning feeling so panicked. It was unbelievable. I thought, personally, I thought I had done something wrong. So I woke up I said, I woke up saying, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, what have I done wrong? God, please, someone I've done wrong. I thought I had done something wrong. So I sat there for a whole day just analysing my day. Like, what have I done wrong? What have I said that's wrong that the Lord, that made the Lord stop visiting me? However, throughout the whole day, I was really uncomfortable. However, later on um, that day, I heard the Lord say to me, Daughter, I want you to rest today. I shall come and visit you very soon. Do not worry, but I need, I want you to eat, okay? Eat. After hearing this, I felt much better and reassured because I thought the Lord had left me forever. But then he just needed me to have that rest because I really needed the rest. My body was really weak at that time and I needed as much rest as possible. On the 13th of August, the visit was from 9.30 to 10.40 a.m. As usual, the Lord visited me and said to me, he came the usual and said that he needed to speak with me. He gave me his hand as usual, led me to heaven, and once changed, the Lord took me to something that looked, had, it had an appearance of a car. He then told me to get into the car, so I got into the driver's seat, and the Lord got into the passenger seat. I started steering the wheel, although I, was, I didn't have to press down in any of the pedals for it to work, nope. Everything just worked automatically by itself, just started working, but because I, I was really excited about the fact of getting into um getting into a car and actually being able to drive i started steering the wheel and it's this it started moving by itself i had so much fun doing that and the fact that it was my first car driving in heaven just made everything a hundred times better and once then once done the lord then said that he needed to show me something else we got out of the car and the lord took me to a long dark tunnel that we had entered before once we entered it i realized that it was a tunnel that led us to hell I started pleading God not to take me down. I pleaded him so much, please don't take me down there. Because I really didn't want to have the image of hell back in my head again. Because ever since visiting hell, it's like, my body is like, it's affected me in a way that I would never in my entire life want to go back to it again, ever. And when we got to the edge of the tunnel, um, we, as we started walking, we got to the edge of the tunnel and I, I started pleading God even harder not to take me down there. And he replied, daughter, I am not taking you down there again, but I need you to remember everything I showed you. And I replied, yes, Lord, I remember. And after saying that, immediately every single thing that I had visited, that uh, the Lord had shown me from the beginning of the visitation to the end came right in, back into my mind. Every single detail, like, I didn't even have to think, oh, what, was, what did this look like? No, nope. every single detail came to my mind. After this, um, as, even though it was horrible, like everything was really horrible. Most some things were really horrible to remember, but I had to remember it. I just have to had to remember it. The Lord then took me out of the tunnel and we sat on the bench, on the bench that was nearby, for a while until the Lord said that we had to go. So he took me back, and after getting changed, he led me home. In the morning of the fourteenth of August, the visit was from seven thirty to eight thirty a.m. The Lord revealed Himself to me as usual, gave me His hand, and said that He needs to speak with me. He took me to heaven, I got changed, and once there he took me to the beach. We said it for quite a long time because most of the time we spoke. I said to the Lord, Lord, sorry if I refuse for you to take me to hell. I shouldn't have refused because it benefits me. Also, Lord, what are your plans for me after this visitation? Because I don't know what to do. And he replied, 
it is okay daughter after this visitation i want you to write everything down properly then once you finish writing everything i then want you to begin testifying the reality of heaven and hell but begin at your church okay daughter the visitation is soon coming to an end but before then i need to show you a little a little bit more things and form you too i do not want you to open fast until sunday but you may eat small things such as egg mayonnaise sandwich or um, tea and bread i then said thank you lord please can you show me how you formed earth and then the lord took me to a huge screen the screen was really really big and we stood there once we we're there the lord and um things started he began pointing at the screen every time he points he said let there be land and immediately he didn't even need to get any angels to do anything he just pointed and said let there be land and land appeared just like that immediately split of a second it was there and he kept pointing and he carried on saying let there be fishes and fishes would appear within the sea let there be sea and the sea would appear it was amazing how we did all this like i was shocked because i before when before we before the whole visitation i would usually think that the lord would want would want to be like oh angels go do this go do that to form it but you actually it's just he just relaxes all he has to do is point and everything happens by his word his words is what makes everything happen and once done the lord then said that we had to go so he took me back home on the 15th of august 2009 2012 the visit was from 9 30 to 11 30 a.m the visit lasted much longer than usual and as usual the lord came and said that he needs to speak with me he gave me his hand and led me to heaven once changed the lord took me on top of a mountain and we sat on a rock we then started talking and i said lord can you just send me back to the world let me tell people the reality of heaven of heaven and hell and come and bring me back to live here forever because i love it here i'd rather be here than anywhere else and it is true i would really rather be in heaven than anywhere else and the lord replied daughter i know how much you want to stay here but it isn't your time yet you must tell people about these realities so that they can make a choice whilst on earth we stayed there a little while longer until the lord said that he needed to show me something therefore he led me down the mountain and in front of us was a very big screen and he said daughter this is how satan will be caught and thrown in the pit of fire and on the screen i saw angel michael with a lot of other angels and satan was chained up his head was on the ground so i couldn't see his face but i could see his back and his horns and he was chained up and with all his demons every single one of his demons were all chained up but an angel michael was down they would be throwing him into the pit of fire the lord and i stood there for a while because when, when satan was facing down, i could see his horns and they are huge and disgusting the lord and i stood there for a while and the lord took and then afterward the lord took, he took me back to the mountain and we sat on the rock the lord then said that he needed to show me something but this time we didn't go down the mountain we just looked down and the lord said daughter look at people's earth bodies look at how it is i looked down and i saw a horrible body it was so dirty and gross and to think that that is how our bodies are it's actually disgusting because every day we wake up and we clean our body we make sure that we is clean we make sure that we have baths and put cream on and us ladies we put makeup on all sorts it's fine mate. it's fine to do all that yes but if the lord opens your spiritual eyes to show you how disgusting the actual body is because the only clean thing in your in your in your body is the spirit once your spirit leaves your body or you should ask the lord to see your normal body it is absolutely it is actually really disturbing it's a really disturbing image that if you keep it you was disgusting that you look at yourself and think why do i do so much for this body in the first place it's disgusting the lord then um, and the lord then said the only pure thing in a person's body is the spirit as i just said it is true without the spirit once you repent your sins because if you don't repent your sins your spirit is dirty once you repent your sins the only clean thing in your body is the spirit which pure because repenting purifies the, the, your spirit the holy spirit will purify you and which will then become the only clean thing there after looking at the horrible sight we then sat back on the rock and i said to the lord lord after the visitation will you come to visit me and speak with me because i don't want to stop seeing you or coming to heaven the lord replied the visitation is coming to an end yes but i still need to form you daughter and after the visits end don't worry i will be visiting you every once in a while the lord then said that we needed to go so he took me back so i got changed and brought me home
And the reason why the, the Lord said this was because the formation started on the 14th of, of August. On the 14th is the day the formation started. And the formation wasn't that, it wasn't that, oh, I would just sit there and they'll, they'll teach me, the Lord would teach me things. No, it was a formation that my body had to be thoroughly massaged. When I mean thoroughly, like thoroughly with a certain type of oil. I can't really explain, but I don't know what type of oil it is because that's the Lord's business. But it was a certain type of oil the Lord would use every single time to massage me thoroughly. And sometimes he would send his angels to massage me. And the massages would hurt. And one reason this massage happened was because with, before the visitation, I was normally a shy kid. I would never, ever come forward to speak to. I was so shy. Like, it was, it was actually quite surprising. It was shocking how shy I was. Just talking to people, even if my family had people over the house, over in the house, I would, I could not have the strength to, like, the courage to go downstairs and talk to them and say hi like hi i would stay up in my i would be forced to say hi to people i could i would stay away, i would make sure i stay away from everyone and just by myself that's how shy i was to even be able to make friends but ever since the formation the lord knew that for this visitation he had to form me to remove this shyness and put courage within me because for me to be able to sit here and speak to people and stand in front of people and testify about this i had to have the courage to do it and after he bought after that he then brought me home on the 17th of august 2012 in the early hours of that morning whilst i was asleep i saw the lord and he said daughter i see that you did your hair because on the 15th on the 16th the lord hadn't visited me he didn't visit me and on the 16th i went to get my hair done and when he said this i was happy and i replied lord why have you not visited me for the last day because i laughed when he said that he had um, he, see, he sees that I'd done my hair. And he replied, he said, Yes, daughter, the formation needs to be done whilst you're asleep. Otherwise, if I do it in the visits, you will get too tired. I then felt like my spirit had been lifted and another one put back inside me. My body was being massaged so thor thoroughly that I felt as if something really, when I mean something really, really hot, hot water can't even explain how hot the thing was. Something was poured inside my heart. It hurt me so much that my whole body scrunched up into a ball that's how much pain i was in it hurt me so much that throughout that whole day even though it soothed away a bit but i still i could still feel the pain in my body and i was really uncomfortable it hurt me so much that and after um after a while i fell asleep and the pain soothed away a bit but throughout the whole day i felt really uncomfortable and painful and that's the reason why one of the reason why i stand here in front of you um everyone today being able to speak with so much courage being able to express what i have to say because because of the whole formation without it i would not be able to do this at all on the 21st of august the lord visited me during the early hours of the morning when i saw the lord i bowed down at his feet and i said that he need um and he said that he needed to speak with me so he took me to heaven and led me to the beach where we sat down he then said daughter the visit to heaven has now come to an end and so has the formation but there is one last formation that needs to be done but this one will be very painful even when i am done but do not worry i will visit you every once in a while after saying this he took me to a place where it was it was like a, a bed in the middle it was like a little massage bed and there were angels around and i laid on the i laid on the um, on the bed and the angels moved back and left and the lord came forward and the angel once the, once the angels left the lord began working on my body he was massaging me the pain i cannot express to you how like i've never felt so much pain in my life ever in my entire life i've never even till today no pain can compare to the pain i felt when the lord was massaging me it was so painful that after the visitation even when i woke like it had it took it a couple of days for the pain to actually soothe away and for me to feel better because i felt really uncomfortable for a while for a really long time the pain was horrible the lord then told me that i wouldn't be afraid of anything anymore or be shy he was saying all this whilst massaging me saying that i wouldn't be afraid of anything or be shy of anything anymore and once done the lord took me back home and i rested and this is also one of the reasons why i stand here today because if not if the lord didn't hadn't 
done all that formation i would not have been here today i would not be where i am sitting here talking freely without being shy of what other people think of me no so if you're out there and you think you have the same problem as being shy you want to express that if you have a thing like a connection with the lord and you're too shy to say it to people pray to him and tell him that you want him to remove this away from you and he will he really will help you and if you need any prayers whatsoever children of god out there no matter what culture you are if you think that you need help for um you need help with praying in order for you for to help you stay away from sins or leave something that you can't stop doing please feel free to call and we will help you with prayers may god bless you my name is um, evangelist um, benjamin boyanga Papa Yasara the father of I Sarah who you just watched the testimony. Those who, those who have had the chance to watch this testimony. The Lord has given us a job to tell people the reality of heaven and hell. It's a work that the Lord has given us. We didn't ask for it. Because the Lord said to Moses this. I will have mercy on those that I feel mercy upon. And I will be kind to those that I feel kind. It's nothing to do with people. Or if someone else wants to run or win it. We're not in front of you for you to know us. But we've come to, in front of you to show you the Jesus Christ for you to be able to re receive him as your Lord and Savior. We are through Jesus. Today you know us. Even if you're an apostle, prophet, prophet, pastor, pastor, evangelist, evangelist or servants of God or children of God those are already believers <coughs> in Jesus and the Lord and Savior I ask of you to pray with your family along with your whole family before sleeping every night. That's the first advice I'll give you. It makes the Lord happy. Because it's something that we do every single day in our lives. Till the day the Lord will come back. I never knew that it made God happy. But I was very surprised in the day the Lord says so. that he sees us every time we pray and that he's very happy with it that is the first pastor. even if you're a pastor do you not know, just stop preaching at church your first church is your home show your children the way of praying show them to follow God because children are a blessing in your life. The second thing I want to say is to all those that have not yet repented their hearts. Those that have not yet received Jesus as a Lord. The Lord has done us grace to come to your houses. DVD is gratuit. This DVD is free. The Lord did not say for us to send it. No. He did not tell us to sell so it. If he says to sell it, then we will sell it. But because he hasn't said yet, we will do exactly what he says. This means, libre feel free to make a hundred copies of it to give to other people so that they can hear this news. Pardon. Please. Pardon. Please. Pardon. Please. If you have not yet come back to the Lord, repent your sins. Believe Jesus as a Lord and Savior. Pardon. Please. Pardon. Please. Pardon. Please. 
danger eza li boso na there is danger in front of us li felo eza vre hell is real paradis eza vre heaven is also real me oye ba ke misala nyon soto ko tambola na ona mokili but know that everything you do and the way you walk within the world shua oyo yo sali na mokili the choice that you have made within the world eza nkona to milona oyo yo loni oko buka yango mokolo kolongwa na mokili it's the fruit that you have sown and you will rip it before you leave earth Lelo. Today. Oko yuko zali kambona na Satana. You have you can have a problem with Satan. Oko kime pa nanzam. You run to God. Sadi osali risumu. Meaning you sin. Oko kime limbangu pa nanzam. And you go back to the Lord. Po zana no na bomo. Because you're still alive. Me mo kolo ya suka soki yo so kufi. But on the last day, once you're already dead. Ozane sika oko kime la ti. You have nowhere to run. Oko mina likambona nanzam. You have a problem with. Nani akolo bela yu? Who's gonna speak for you? Nani ako defend you? Who's gonna defend you? Nani ako limbisa yu? Who's gonna forgive you? Parce que evre ya ekulusu. Because the the sign of the cross. Yesu akufa ne ekulusu. Jesus died on the cross. O neglige evre wa anate ya ngonde pesi biso accele loto zwan chance ya koyoka sangu ya paradise. Do not neglect that whole scene because that's what allows us today to be able to hear about paradise. Bibiri elo. The Bible says John chapter 3 verse 15. John chapter 3 verse 15. Poe tenzambe alinga ki moki. Because the Lord loved the world. Apesi biso mwana na yela liki. He gave us his own child. Ete moto na moto oyo akondi melaye. That every single one that will believe in him. Abe bisamate. To not be ruined. Me azwa bomo ya seko. But to have eternal life. Soko tali amuri ya Yesu. If you see the love of Christ. Visa vina bato. Towards people. Apesi mwana na yela liki nda. He gives his Zambe apesi mwana na yena likinda. He give gave his own. Kaka pona makamu mi bali. Just for two things. Soko ndi mi. If you believe in him. Oko baby samate. You will not be ruined. And not return. In other words. Oko kende na li felote. You will not go to. Soko ndi mi. If you believe in him. Oko zwa bomo ya seko. You will have eternal life. Me soko boy kondi maie. But if you don't want to believe in him. Mama. Mother. Tata. Father. Elenge. Youth. Pardon. Please. Danger is alibosu. There is danger in front of us. Danger is alibosu. There is danger in front of us. O confesse ma sumu na yo. Confess your sins. Ata o salaki ma beleki. Even if you you've done so many bad things. Ata o zwa magi. Even if you took magic. Ata o zando kyo buma bato. Even if you wish you've killed. Ata o longola baze. Even if you've aborted children. Ata o sala pite ya ndeni. Even if you've done all sorts of wrong. Ata o sala masumu ya lolenge ni. Even if you've sinned so many times. Yesu atini ngana yebi sa yo. The Lord has sent me to tell you. Danke nano kufite. Because you're not dead yet. O zan na chance ya 90% oko tanapara you have a chance of 90% 100% of entering paradise repent your sins bongola monte mala repent your sins bongola monte mala you have a chance you have a chance 90% you have a chance oko tanapara to come into heaven problem is akaka problem is yambola repent kisi ya kobika babengi yango ko confesser the medicine of being saved is called confessing me osala dabor examine your conscience na vina yo but examine your conscience first si mana ko sala examine your conscience after examining your conscience confesser ma sumu na yo si mana ko confesser after confessing zwa decision na mote mana yo take a decision in your life pesenga yesu and ask the lord asunga yo pote bo mote no ko sala to help you because within by yourself you cannot mama na batata mother and father ngai na suki yo i stop here na evangelist na eglise di dieu i am an evangelist within and the kona biso ba pasteur bo zuli ba kuya kola nda biso you pastors you have had the chance to follow us oye bisa bana na nzambe so children of god prepare bana na nzambe prepare children of god yesu azako zonga kala the lord is coming back very soon yesu azako zonga kala the lord is coming back very soon My, my number. If you want to pray for you. Zero zero quarante quatre. Zero zero seven four. Sept cent quarante. Zero zero seven four. Cinquante huit. Fifty eight. Cinquante neuf. Fifty nine. Quatre. Four. Quatre vingt sept. Eighty seven. Na zongeli. I'll go back. Zero zero quarante quatre. Zero seven four. Sept quatre. Seven four. Zero. Zero. Cinquante huit. Fifty-eight, cinquante-neuf, fifty-nine, quatre, four, quatre-vingt-sept, eight-seven. Benga to kubondela pona. Call and we'll pray for you. We thank Evangelist Didier. We thank our brother Evangelist Didier. Oyo andi mi kosala mosala oyo. Who has agreed to do this work? Tikan zambe abenir bi. Let the Lord bless you. Tikan zambe abenir bi. Let the Lord bless you. Kosala commerce na na DVD oyo te. Do you know go selling this DVD? Na pesi yo konsei. I'm advising. Pasi biso bato to zwa ki grace to take ki amote. Because we us who the ones who had grace we didn't sell it. Kabolela yango bato. Give it to people. Sunga mosala yanzambi. Help the work of God. Multiply. 
yango soko za na moye tinda yango bisika na bisika yango ko permettre moye bomo ya bande ko bakobika nzambe ako Recompense yo para po na mosalo yo. This law of people's love to be saved and he, the Lord will remember you with the work that you have done. Because the Lord is rich. Let the Lord bless you. Kolo abenir mabota na bino. Lord Lord bless your family. Soki to mona na mukilite. If we don't see your children. Mo banga te pa se to komona na pa. Don't we will see each other in paradise. Kuzana na joie. We have joy. Longwa na masumu. Come away from sin. Kuzonge la masumu te. Do not go back to sin. Pase kombo na yeko ki kolongo na buku na. Because your name can come out of the book of life. Pardon. Please. Pardon. Please. Pardon. Please. Soki o sobongo If you already repented the sins, walk within um, fear in God. Fear God. Servir nzambi. Serve God. Kangama na nzambi. Hold on to God. Ata pas Jesus yo. Even if pain comes to you, it's Satan. Nzambi akuti kayote. The Lord will not leave. Nzambi akuti defend. The Lord will defend. Tika nzambi na bomo ya benir bino. Let the Lord bless you. Na yebi yete to komona na. I know we'll see you tomorrow. Mon âme qui s'ouvre à toi Que la puissance de la croix de notre roi Vienne remplir mon cœur de gloire Oh, oh, oh.